binge watch Carnival Row and while I liked it, I didn't like it as much as I thought I would. First, I'm gonna be starting off this review spoiler free. I'll let you know once I get into spoilers, just in case you decide you wanna watch the show or you haven't watched it yet. First, depending on what type of fantasy person you are, you might not like the level of technology in this show. I really don't like guns in my fantasy series. If they're guns, I'd rather be reading the sci-fi genre or into the sci-fi genre. Of course, I knew there were going to be guns in this fantasy series from the trailers, so I knew what I was getting myself into, but I just, with magic and fantasy, I prefer medieval technology level personally. The Victorian setting was all right, again, with my bias towards more medieval time fantasy. I wasn't that into it. It wasn't as steampunk as I thought it was going to be though, so that was nice. Not anything against steampunk, just not really my thing. I think for an original fantasy series, they did a great job with world building and introducing us to that world at a nice pace and not using too much exposition to do it. It felt very organic how they let us learn about this world. And you may think that's a, okay, whatever, why are you praising them for doing that? But it can be bad with original fantasy worlds, how shows and books try to introduce it, it can be really bad. They actually did a great job with Carnival Row. I will say I saw some early reviews for Carnival Row before its official release to all of us, and I don't necessarily agree with some of the criticism. One big thing I kept seeing over and over again was they tried to shove too much modern politics into Carnival Row, and I don't know if those critics haven't read or seen a lot of fantasy, but the level of politics and race hatred is pretty normal. Humans not getting along with other races or looking down on them, I feel like is a fantasy trope that is done over and over again. So I don't see where they're saying they're taking our modern politics and shoving it into this show. They really weren't. Which brings me to the next thing that I saw a lot with critics was saying that Carnival Row was a Game of Thrones ripoff. I don't even know where they were coming from with that. And I honestly went into this show expecting it, looking for Game of Thrones ripoff characters, scenes, dialogue, plot lines. And I came out of it going, what the fuck were those critics smoking? Now, is this show more of a ripoff of Tolkien-ish? fantasy? Yeah. Most fantasy after Tolkien is a ripoff of him. Even George, the creator of A Song of Ice and Fire, Game of Thrones, ripped off Tolkien to a certain degree. It's... I, I don't know why we keep saying everything's a ripoff of Game of Thrones. So overall, if you haven't seen Carnival Row, I would strongly recommend seeing it. It's not my favorite, but it definitely is above average. I mean, I would say it was a six and a half, so not great but above average and good enough that I don't regret watching it and I'm looking forward to the second season. Okay, let's go on to spoilers. So if you don't want spoilers, stop watching now. Okay, back to the Game of Thrones ripoff comment from critics. The only two things I can see that maybe was a Game of Thrones ripoff was one Sophie chaos thing. Because when she said chaos, I, I instantly thought of Peter Baelish and chaos is a ladder, but Chaos being used for someone to climb the political ladder isn't something invented by Game of Thrones. The other thing is maybe because siblings were fucking and they thought, okay, Game of Thrones did it so no one else can do it. I hate to break it to you, but Game of Thrones and, and George didn't invent incest. That's been in books and fantasy series for a long time and also in our own human history. George did not invent siblings fucking each other. I'm, I'm sorry. It actually reminds me of this big reviewer who watched Crimson Peak and then said, oh, the twist that the siblings were having sex was so stupid because Game of Thrones has already done it and it wasn't shocking, so you need to try harder. And I thought, what? Why if one show does something, can an another show not even related to that show do it as well? People are weird. 
Okay, moving on. I think there were too many twists in the first season and way too much affairs and, and backstabbing. It just felt so crammed in. I will say my favorite revelation was Philo being half fae. Although, to be honest, I actually would have enjoyed him not being half fae and being full human and being working to have equality with the other races just because he feels for them and he's a good human being versus he did it because he has vested interest in making sure the other races are treated equal, right? So it kind of took away from him being a better character in that aspect. But I guess maybe that's the point where we all have our own selfish reasons for doing things, even if those things are good. Now his mother being the singer and his dad being the chancellor was just too much. Top that with piety having an affair and fucking the opposition leader and having two children from that. And then on top of that, kidnapping her son and being the one creating the monster. They just put way too much in this first season. I feel like if they would have focused the season a bit more, I would have rated it higher. Instead, it just felt all over the place. What is weird about this show, I had a friend who also watched it and we came together and we talked about it. And he asked me, who was your favorite character? And I couldn't answer him. I still can't answer him. Tourmaline is definitely the hottest character though. I can tell you my least favorite character was Jonah, but understandably we weren't supposed to like him. He's the spoiled rich kid that never works for anything because he's been given everything. But still, even at the end of season one, I hope Sophie kills him in season two. Piety is second on my shit list just because she was happy about killing her husband's bear and I really don't like animal abuse and animal killing. That's something that never sits well with me with anything, so I, I'm biased with that. I think maybe Vignette would be my favorite character, but even then she was just okay. Man, does her face, the actress, constantly look angry. Of course, if I lost my homeland and saw as much slaughter and experienced all that she did, I, I'd probably look pissed off all the time too, so I guess I can't blame her for that one. I think Philo is an absolute piece of shit. One, faking your death to your lover is just so horrendous. And then once she comes to the Berg and he sees her again, instead of just groveling at her feet and trying to explain, he goes back to his fuck buddy and tries to make it serious. You're a piece of shit, Philo. Fuck you. I was hoping at that point they wouldn't get back together. The only thing that redeemed him in my eyes was at the end of season one when he exposed himself again for being half fey when he went into the quarantine area to be with Vignette. If he would have just left and been like, okay, good luck. Uh, yeah, fuck that. Also, and maybe I'm just a cold-hearted lady. I liked Imogen and Agrius being together. I think that was great. I feel like you could have seen from a mile away what was gonna happen. The rich, stuck-up lady who's racist falls in love with uh, another race. But man, dude, you lost a lot for some pussy. And I just don't, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just the, the level of the, the sex game. I mean, apparently Philo was great because Vignette mourned for seven years about that D, but apparently her V wasn't that great because Philo just went back to the burg and was like, eh, I'm gonna start fucking other people. For season two, I'm guessing they're gonna go in some predictable ways. It's gonna deal with the escalation of the non-humans being treated poorly and quarantined, and while Sophie and Jonah make stronger regulations against them, they're going to start to rebel. This new level of abhorrent treatment is just finally going to be enough to, to spark them to fight back as a group. The problem for the humans is they have Philo who knows a lot of the inner workings and how it goes, especially with the enforcement. So he's going to be a great ally with helping them get around and get their equality. I'd also imagine Sophie is gonna do some fucked up things to manipulate Jonah, but Jonah's going to show he's clever as well, and they'll be going back and forth in season two trying to outmaneuver each other. I think I'm most excited to see where Imogen and Agrius go in season two. We could explore a whole different territory in this world, and I would be completely down for that. I can see them going somewhere where Imogen is now the outcast if they do want to be predictable and then uh, Agrius is the one trying to help her assimilate into the society. 
And I'm kind of hoping that season one, they just threw a lot of twists and so on just to grip people and get them intrigued. And maybe in season two, they can slow it down a little bit and, and build a little bit better with more depth instead of just going to all these different characters with all these different intrigues. So yeah, again, I would give this show above average, not great. I liked how gray the characters were. I liked a lot of the political intrigue. I just feel like there were too many twists and revelations in the first season, and I'll definitely be checking out the second season. So you can like, subscribe, and let me know your thoughts on Carnival Row season one down below. Let me